Hello everyone, it's me, John Lorden, back here with another episode of Itchy Mysteries. And today we're going to look into, it's a little bit of a different one than usual. Uh, it is called The Confessions of Thomas Quick. And this is a film that came out in Norway in March of 2016. You can now find it on Netflix here in the US. And let me just preface it by saying it wasn't very highly rated. Um, you know, Netflix ratings get adjusted per user, but for me, they didn't think I was gonna like it very much, and that's kind of strange, because I watch a lot of uh, documentaries of, about true crime in particular, so. Uh, let me just preface <laughs> the review with that, but we'll go forward. Uh, the tagline for it is, the truth behind Sweden's most notorious serial killer. And this is a man that he referred to himself as Thomas Quick. His real name is Stur Bergwall. And it's pretty, it was really interesting to me because I was very curious to see how a different country, particularly a country like Sweden, that has a bit of a different view of, um, I mean, just a whole different worldview than someone here from the US, but how they would handle uh, a serial killer like that. And in the documentary, they even talk about it like he is known as kind of the first real big serious serial killer in Sweden. Now I did a little research into it and I could see that there are a few other people that have been noted as being serial killers for Sweden. Um, I think one person killed four people, another person admitted to killing five or six. So I don't think he is quite the first serial killer, but um, the crimes that he committed were certainly uh, horrifying. Um, and that's, that's part of what is kind of horrifying about this whole documentary. And I, I'm using that word uh, very strongly. I wanna warn you guys that it's almost like a dare to ask you to watch this, because I know that not many people are going to uh, be able to get through it. There is a lot of language, particularly in the first half, about the crimes. He essentially is confessing to these crimes. That's why it's called the Confessions of Thomas Quick. And the details of the confessions are extremely graphic, probably some of the most graphic material that I've ever heard in any documentary. Now, luckily, it is just hearing about it. It's literally just words. There are no you know, pictures, grisly pictures, nothing like that. Um, but the types of subjects you're gonna hear about, they're going to disturb you. Um, it's pretty rare that while I'm watching one of these documentaries that I check the progress bar to see how far it is. And I did that a couple times with this one, kind of hoping for it to end soon because I just, I wasn't sure how much more I was gonna be able to take. And that's a bit of an unfortunate side effect of how this story unfolds. So what is this story? Essentially, it's about this guy that is put into a psychiatric facility that is also kind of like a prison. I mean, it's, it's got um, you know big walls around it, it's got guards all over it. Uh, it's as close to a jail as a psychiatric facility could get, I would suppose. And this man, uh, Thomas Quick, uh, is being analyzed there, he's being medicated there, doctors are working with him, and they believe that, uh, this, and this is where it gets really interesting, the doctors have a belief that there is some reasonable explanation for these crimes that he's committing, that he must have got, gone through things in his childhood that would lead him to be doing these things. Um, and just, you know, from a psychology point of view, that's a very interesting question, and where this, documentary leads you to after kind of setting up that premise is a much different outcome. Now, I don't want to spoil it for you guys. I really recommend that if you're able to stomach some of the tough language, and that's all that it is, it's language, but you know, for some of us, it's pretty disturbing to hear about these types of things happening to children and, you know, cannibalistic practices and things like that. So just know if you're triggered by that kind of stuff, this probably isn't a movie for you, but if you're able to get through that, which once again I'll note is loaded pretty heavy into the first half of the film and then it takes a bit of a turn. Um, I believe by the time you get to the end of this movie there is some true value in understanding how that type of system where you know he isn't just thrown into jail but they're trying to treat him, um, how that system might also be abused and or abusive in its own way. And that is really kind of at the core of this whole story. And that's about as much as I can give you guys without just spoiling it for you. But just know that 
by the end of this film, uh, I was pretty impressed with how it was constructed because it left me off in a totally different place than I started. And quite honestly, I love that about very good storytelling. Um, but it's weird because I can't even really sum up what the core mystery is here for you without blowing it. As a matter of fact, even some of the write-ups about this movie will literally blow it for you. So um, if you can watch it without reading too much about the film, I think you are going to be taken on a much more interesting journey than if you know where it's going to take you. Um, however, if you do have trouble with the material that I've mentioned before, maybe knowing that the journey is going to lead you to a different place might help you get there. I know, this all sounds really cryptic. But, um, some very good cinematography, some very beautiful pictures of the country in Sweden, um, and just really interesting to me to see how another part of the world operates around something like this. And then there is a very interpersonal drama uh, about Mr. Bergwall and what he has done, what he's going through, um, what other people are doing with him. It's definitely a brain scratch. Um, and if you're a fan of mystery content, I think by the time you get to the end of this film, you're going to look back on it and say, wow, I enjoyed that. I don't think you're going to want to watch it again. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel about it. I'm kind of I'm happy that I was able to get through it once. I'm, I'm really happy that I hung in there because there was a few times where I was just going to bail on it. Um, but by the end, I'm happy that I stuck it out. Uh, I enjoy the questions that it left me with. It really kind of left me spinning on a couple of issues in particular that I think are really important and more people should be looking into. Um, so I do think that there, there is value in watching The Confessions of Thomas Quick. Um, it is rated right now a 6.3 on IMDb. I was going to give it a 6.5 before I saw that rating, so it looks like uh, I'm pretty much in lockstep. I was thinking of even rating it higher except for the fact that it tells me something about the film that I don't want to watch it again. And um, I don't know, even, even knowing what I now know about the film, it's just, it's so tough. That first half is so tough that I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are really going to have trouble just hearing about these types of crimes. So I just want to give you that big warning, trigger warning. Um, but for those of you that can do it, there's something to this film. And I, I do think it's valuable. It raises a lot of important questions. I feel like I'm just repeating myself, so I'm going to let you guys go here. But uh, if you have Netflix and you have some spare time, I do recommend at least trying to check out The Confessions of Thomas Quick. Hey, you know, if you get in the middle of it and you feel like bailing, maybe you can just fast forward for, you know, five or ten minutes and then try to pick it back up or something like that because it's, it's certainly a tough first half, but um, it does take some pretty big and interesting turns. Sound good? I hope so. Thank you so much for joining me on this edition of Itchy Mysteries. I appreciate each and every one of you out there. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Catch you on the next show on the Lord and Arts channel.